Today we're going to show you how to color tone in Photoshop and if you use color toning in Lightroom you might be surprised to see that the exact same tools are available in Photoshop. Today we're going to show you how to do it. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and today we are color toning. It's going to be really exciting. Let's go ahead and get into it. So I've got three sample images here. You guys can download these and follow along totally free. Follow the link right down below to download these images. Now let's start with our first image here. Looks really good. We've got our subject. Uh, this is a beautiful landscape. And I want to make this image just a little bit warmer. So to color tone in Photoshop, we're going to be using a filter, the camera raw filter. So before we use any filters in Photoshop, it's a great idea to go ahead and make this layer a smart object. That way we can undo or change this filter at any time. Okay, let's go ahead and click on the background layer. We're going to go to layer down to smart objects, and then we're going to go to convert to smart objects. There we go. Now you can see the smart object icon right here. We're ready to go. So we're going to go to filter and then down here to camera raw filter. There we go. Let's click on camera raw filter. And you might recognize this. If you're a Lightroom user, you might be like, whoa, wait, this looks exactly like what's going on in Lightroom. And it pretty much is. <laughs> it's basically all the Lightroom editing tools built into Photoshop within Adobe Camera Raw. It's incredibly cool. Now, if you just go here on the right hand side and go past down light and color mixer, you're going to get to color grading. And it's right here, just like it is in Lightroom Classic, Lightroom Mobile, Lightroom Desktop. Okay, now to start with, we have the option to adjust our midtones, highlights, and shadows all in one. You can click here on just the shadows. So you can see that just the midtones, or just the highlights, and then you can add a global color, which will just kind of put a color over your entire image. Now, I like to use this slider here, this option with the three-way showing us our midtones, our shadows, and the highlights. So let's go ahead and start off with our shadows. Now, here's how I recommend using this slider. Go ahead and click here in the center, and then you're going to want to kind of drag out as far as you can in the either direction, okay? And then kind of just go around the wheel until you see something you like. And I'm kind of liking this nice blue color there. So when you go around the wheel, this now you have two little uh, points to select here. Okay, this outer point here, this is going to allow you to select your hue. So you can see it's more purpley. This is a little bit more blue. Now this inner point, this will allow you to affect your saturation. So I have less saturation and more saturation. Okay, I can affect that right there. And then this slider down here will be brightness or lightness. Okay, it's going to get lighter or darker. And then, of course, you can click on this little preview to see the before and after there. Okay, now I recommend starting here with our midtones. Then we're going to move into our shadows and see, okay, what do we want in our shadows? And sometimes you're really surprised, you know, sometimes you think you want something and then you just kind of play around with it. And you're like, Ooh, you know what? I kind of like that. Let's see, maybe a little bit less saturated. That looks really good. And I'm going to play with my lightness. Maybe I want to make that a little bit darker. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay. And my highlights, again, I'm just going to click here in the center. And we're going to drag all the way out to the edge. So I see a very saturated version of this. And now this super saturated version kind of like helps me decide, okay, what color do I want in my highlights? I like this color. That looks nice. And then I'm going to use this inner slider to kind of decide how much saturation I want. There we go. And don't forget about your lightness here as well. Oh, this looks fantastic. Now with your color grading, don't forget you have a little eyeball here. You can just click that on or on and that's the before and after. So here's our before and after. Now with blending at the very bottom, you can choose how much you want. This is going to be more highlight, like what you chose to work with your highlight color. Okay. And if you bring this to the left, this is going to be more of your shadow color. So you can always do your fine tune adjustments here. I think something like that looks pretty good. Hey, write up effect 50. By the way, if you bring this all the way out to here, you can double click right there and it's going to reset it. Okay, fantastic. Same with these sliders. You can double click right here, boop, boop, and you can see that got reset there. I'll just put it back about where it was. Okay, now our balance, this is basically going to be how this actually blends in with our photos. Okay, so we're going to see a little bit more towards the warm color here. And this is going to be a little bit more towards the green, green color. Here we go. So I recommend usually playing with blending and balance. These are just going to change how these color effects work with your image. 
And that looks fantastic. Again, don't forget, you can always click on this eyeball right here next to color grading. Just press and hold there. There's our before and after. Look at that beautiful change we made. We're going to hit OK. Now, we made that change. Don't forget, we started off by making this a smart object. Really important because check this out. We have our layer. Now we have a smart filter. I can turn this smart filter off and on at any time. Cool. I can also just double click right here on camera raw filter and then check this out. I still have all my information intact and I can go in and make changes at any time. You know, if I want my shadows to be more deep blue, I just hit OK here and boom, that updates in this image. How nice is that? All right, we got two more images for you as well. So the workflow is the same. We're going to go to layer down to smart objects over to convert to smart object. Make sure it's got the smart object icon. Next, we're going to go to filter. We're going to go down to camera raw filter. And here we have our color grading. You can zoom in if you want to. You don't have to, but I'd like to zoom in a little bit. Here we have our color grading. Okay, our midtones, we're starting the same way. We're going to click and I'm going to drag those all the way out to the edge. And then I'm going to kind of see what colors I like. Now, in this case, we have a subject with his face pretty visible. So I want to make sure his skin tones stay really nice and natural looking. Okay, there we go. That looks really good. Bring a little, little bit of light into there. Our shadows, maybe I'm going to make these a little bit cooler. Ooh, I like that. It's kind of like cyan color. And then I can decide how much color I'd like there. Okay, and how bright or how dark I'd like my shadows. That looks pretty nice too. And we'll see what we want to do with our highlights. Again, I'm going to bring them out all the way towards the outer edge of this radius. And then kind of just go around in the circle and kind of see like, hey, what do we want our highlights to look like? You know, there's no right or wrong, by the way, when you're doing this. There really isn't, okay? It's like literally just choose whatever you think might look good. And you can change your mind at any time. That's the that's the beauty of this sort of thing. Yeah, I kind of like that color there. And maybe a little bit less saturated. Okay, now don't forget we want to do a couple of things. Uh, okay, we want to make sure we test out. We can go back and kind of dial everything in. But don't forget, you want to make sure you work with your blending and your balance. So... Let's just push the blending. Again, this is going to be towards our shadows, like what we did with our shadows. You, you can see they're cooler. Okay. And then over here towards the left, that's going to be more towards highlights. Okay. There we go. I think that looks really good. And this changes how these options blend in with your photo. Okay. I think that looks really, really nice. Fantastic. Now we're going to go ahead and go up here and click on this little eyeball to make that before and after. Now, we haven't done this just yet. You know what? I want my midtones, uh, I want my shadows to be a little bit less saturated because his midtones weren't looking that great. Okay, this looks really good. Now, let's say we want to save this as a preset so we can use this in future images. It's really easy to do. Right here in Adobe Camera Raw, all you have to do is click this dot, 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 and then we're going to go down to where it says create preset. Okay, really cool. Now, with this preset, you can choose any of these that you want to select. I'm just going to uncheck everything, boop, 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 until we're only seeing color mixer because that's what we're actually working with, right? Or color grading. <laughs> Almost clicked on the wrong one. All right. And then we're just going to call this warm and cool. Okay. And that's going to be saved in user presets. You can create a new group if you want. We'll just put it in user presets. So I'll hit OK. Now, we talked about presets. We just made a preset, but check this out. There's actually a lot of presets built into Adobe Camera Raw. So right over here is your preset slider. So let's go ahead and click on presets and you can see all these presets. Now there's some really cool adaptive presets that will like enhance your portrait. For instance, you can see it's only working on the portrait. All right, really cool stuff. You can even blur the background. Look at that. Very, very cool stuff. This is brought over from the new Lightroom updates. But here you can see we have all these different options. And this is basically just color grading. All these different options here, they're built into this image. So you can see like, okay, what, what do I like? Hey, maybe I want this. Some are a bit strong, you know, some are a bit like, all right, you know, chill out. <laughs> all right, I'm fine. It, okay, we're gonna click on this one. It's a bit strong, but check this out. You have a slider up here. You can make it less strong or more strong as well. Okay, now don't forget, if you've done a lot of editing and you're like, ah, I liked my original one, well, check it out. Under presets, we got this warm and cool that we just made. We can click back at that at any time. So that's the preset that we just made, and we're going back to it. All right, let's hit OK there, and boom, our image is looking really good, right? 
again, don't forget, you can turn this off and on at any time, okay? And if you just double click right here on your camera raw filter, you can also just, well, you can do a few things. You can go ahead and like change this. You can make it a little bit less strong if you want to. There we go, and we'll hit okay. It'll automatically update on your image. Now here's the other cool thing you can do. Check it out. Okay, we're gonna zoom in. Because I've made a smart filter, I've got this camera raw filter. Check this out, this icon right over here. I'm gonna double click on this. And now I can actually just take the opacity of this filter and drag it down. So if I want this entire filter that I just applied to my image, I can adjust the opacity of this at any time. So this is kind of like, you know, deciding how much or how little effect I want on my image. Boom, that looks really good. All right, we got one more great example coming for you. So we're starting off the same way we just did. We're gonna start by going to layer down to smart objects over to convert to smart objects. Really important. Make sure it has the smart object icon. It does filter down to camera raw filter. Boom, here we are. Let's hit command plus a couple times and then into color grading. But this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right into our presets, okay? And I wanna see if any of these presets is gonna kinda like inspire me to how I might wanna change the image. Ooh, I like this one a lot. Okay, so we can decide how much or how little we want of that preset, don't forget, okay? That looks really good. Now, if we go back to our editing, what do we see? I didn't even move this. This was the preset that moved it and it just moved the midtones. The shadows and the highlights are pretty much where they are at. So we can see those presets will actually give you some color in there that you can use with your image and it's gonna be a really good starting place. So you can see you don't have to go super strong with these effects for them to make a big change in your image. Again, let's go ahead and hit okay. Fantastic, I really like the color of this image overall now. Now again, you can turn this off and on at any time. You can double click right here in your camera raw filter and see that before and after and make subtle changes at any time. Color grading in Photoshop. Boom, it's never been easier. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, you can download all these sample images on flurn.com totally for free. And if you enjoyed this video, give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment down below of what you'd like to see next. And if you wanna get more free tutorials, click on that subscribe button. Thanks again, and I'll flurn you later. Bye everyone.